Hello, good morning. Welcome back to Wicked Works. Uh, we're going to try to um, put this uh, whole mess of spinny bits back together. So this is the, uh, I think it's a 1958 or 9 split case um, that I had lying around uh, that I'm going to try to put back together for Clementine. Um, I did not film the disassembly section of this because I had no idea what I was doing and I just wanted to get it over with. Um, I've got some cleaning to do before we can start putting things together. I did bring the, uh, the case halves actually to a transmission shop to be hot tanked. And it got a significant portion of the crust and whatnot off, but I want to go over it a little finer um, to make sure that all the crap is off. I have a whole bunch of hardware and everything in an ultrasonic cleaner right now. Um, and then uh, there's a couple of other things I got to do before we can start shoving things back together. Um, so let me get the cleaning done. And then, uh, and then I think the first step is actually going to be getting the forks and whatnot in place. Um, and now that it's been a few weeks, I don't really remember how they go back together, so... Okay, I'm getting ready to start putting this all back together. And the first thing that's going to go in is my shift forks. And I've got this really great uh, DIY split case um, thread on the Samba. I'll include a link for this. The only thing that Nancy doesn't include is where these little oblong uh, pins go. I'm fairly certain they go like in between here because the other three springs, the other, I have an idea where the camera's going, uh, the other three springs and balls all go in these slots in here. And you got to push the ball down while you're moving the slot in. So I got to do some investigating, some research and whatnot. And when I know where these little bastards go, um, then we can start putting all that together and we've got to do this shaft and gear that goes up here after that and then this is going to go in I have to I gotta find a, a preload for this because this guy is loose so I want to torque this up before I put this all back in um, but like I said I've got to figure out where those little guys go first and then we can start trying to put all this back together all right I kind of think I have an idea what's going on here so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this guy first, it's got a little hook up here and it sits at the top of the line and this is used in some sort of conjuncture with this guy that goes up here as well. So I'm doing this because it's at the, the bottom of the row, this kind of tilts downward like that. Um, and I think it's going to allow me to get those oblong detents in. So Nancy does actually talk about this and what, what she's saying is that these are used as a lockout to allow only one of these rods to move at any given time instead of being able to move more than one. So I did have to unbolt this in order to get it out of the box. So I'm hoping. Oh no! I gotta put my, I gotta put my spring and ball in there first. So we're gonna do that like that. Get a little ball and in there. Okay. And so then we'll take this guy. That. Oh, just knock the ball out. Okay, now I understand why I need a screwdriver. So I'm getting my magnet. Suck that guy out of there. Drop that back in. Okay. And before I can get the shaft all the way in, I have to get this on. And, uh, like that. And I knock the ball out again. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna do this again. Like that. Okay. And then I'm gonna try to get a flathead in there to push that down. Which way is this supposed to go? I think it's like that. Yeah, okay. 
So push that down. Okay. All right, that appears to be correct. And then I'm gonna have to get the bolt for this guy in. And I think there's a little bit of an adjustment to that. I'm not sure quite how to make that yet. So to figure that out, I'm not sure which size bolt goes in there either. I think it's that guy. I'm gonna have to figure, figure that adjustment out before I can uh, put the rest of the shafts in too. Okay, I think this actually has to go in a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna pull that back out some actually. Or not. Okay, I guess I need a larger pry bar. So let me get this out a bit. Come on. Okay. But why? Oh, because I need to tighten that up. Okay. And then I've got to get a detent in there. Okay, so let me get a socket on that. Um, or do I want to put that shaft in first? So I've got to figure out how this guy goes in. And according to the picture, the smaller gear is going to face towards the back of the case. Um, and it looks like it just has a, a little roll pin that goes in here and keeps, keeps all that in. So we're just going to put that in so that the fork is sitting on the split. And then this guy should be able to should be and there we go. Okay. That's good. All right. So there's the roll pin I took out and that's just going to go right in there. Let me try to push it down a little bit. With the screwdriver just to get it to seat. There it goes. Ah, okay, now I know what keeps that in place. So on uh, on that shaft, I'll show you, but there's a there's a pin on that shaft that I have to tighten up that's gonna go in there and that'll that'll seat that. Alright, so I'm not sure how I'm supposed to adjust this. All right, let me do some research to figure out how I need to adjust this because there's there's quite a lot of throw in that. So let me uh, let me do some reading and when I know, you'll know. Okay, so apparently in order to check to make sure that that thing is adjusted, one of the things you can do is to put the main shaft in place uh, to shift out of um, in and out of reverse and make sure that everything's moving properly. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to tighten this up now so that I can, you know, keep putting that in as needed. Um, I am not working off of the correct manual for this year transmission. So the the torque specs and whatnot might be a little bit different. Um, I'm using a 52 to 57 manual. Uh, because I never bought a 58 to 60 because I don't own a 58 to 60. Rachel does and she has that manual but she ain't here today so I'm just kind of doing whatever I can with what I have. I'm going to try to flatten this um, this uh, washer out so that I can tighten this nut up. probably replace this washer uh, but I'm lazy and cheap okay 
<clears throat> okay, so according to the incorrect manual, we're going to torque this to 22 foot-pounds. I'm going to start at 11. Okay, well, 11 is very low. So now we're going to go up to 22. Come on. Oh, it's spinning in the thing, damn it. Let's ruin the main shaft, that'll be fine. And that's 22, okay. Alright, so I'm going to try to do a different side of this now. Just to... I'm going to get a larger punch and see if I can get that to flatten out. I want a punch or a chisel. Maybe a chisel would be better. I don't have a chisel floating around in here. Where'd it go? I don't, I don't put my tools back, so where did it go? I mean it, but... Okay, I guess we're going to use a punch. Okay. Found a pretty good diagram of the oblong uh, lockout detent balls. Um, and it looks like because there's a cutout in each of the rods that way that the pin will lock to each one when you know in a certain position here so hopefully uh, it'll be pretty easy to just sneak those in there I think a magnet might be helpful for that magnet and a screwdriver anyway so I've got uh, I've got the selector shaft for reverse in right now so we're gonna do uh, shaft for second and first and second this guy so I'm gonna put a pin in and then a shaft and then we're gonna do the other pin and the selector for third and fourth so let's uh, let's try to do that and see what happens and maybe I'll figure out how to use a camera okay so give me one of these little these little guys here and I've got to get it get it in there. So I'm just using a magnet. And I'm hoping I can get the end caught and then maybe use a screwdriver to slide it off like that and then just push it in place like that maybe. Okay so now I'm going to do another spring and a ball over here. That and then in there. All right. So which? I'm gonna figure out which one of these pin shifter bits is actually the one that I'm looking for here. Uh, okay. So the big wide guy. I guess apparently this one is for first and second. See how it's really wide here? Should probably spray this off before I put it in. Whereas this one is really thin. Okay. So let me uh, let me spray this down just to make sure it's clean, and then we can shove that in place. And you can see the detent positions of all that. So just like the last one, we're gonna put this in here first. Okay, and then we've got to get this guy on, and it's gonna face with the saddle this way. that and there's a there's an access hole on the outside I can't see it but there's two of them here there's this guy and this one and that's to adjust these forks while you're while everything's together on the outside of the box so now that this is in here I'm gonna get that started a little bit and then get my screwdriver in there to do the detent ball like that and then hopefully I can just oh, that's gonna pop me right in the face okay there we go all right, so that's in. And then I can move this guy kind of over here. And you can see the 
I don't know if you can, but there's a little cutout here for the screw, to, for the bolt to go through. So I may actually just leave that the way it is for now, get the other one in, and then uh, get the um, the other sh the other actual gear set in here to to try to move these around and make sure everything's good. So I'm going to leave this the way it is, and let's put the other one in. Another spring. ball. Okay, I gotta do my other D10 pin here on the opposite side. So get your like that. And uh, just stick that guy in there. And there we go. Okay. And then we can take this guy apart. Oops. And stick that in there. And I've got to get my other fork on now. Um, I'm going to assume that it, the bolt's going to face down as opposed to like this. I could. Uh, nope. It's gonna go, so this bolt is under the shaft, okay, and then this one is gonna sit over the shaft, is what it looks like to me. So I'm gonna rotate this shaft so that all these are face down, like that, and get it kind of lined up with the hole down there, okay, that's in. Rinse and repeat, get that ball pressed down that. Come on. Okay. Good. So I'll get this guy kind of up here. All right, I'm going to put that, that main shaft back in and see what everybody's interfering with just to make sure. All right, so that's in. And we're spinning. Okay. So this guy is going to be up here like that. And this guy is going to be over here. So when I pry up on this guy, nope. I don't want to do this. I want to go from this side. Nope. Maybe it can. Nope. Okay. Well, at least those are working. So can I do it this way? So that's, that's all the way in there. All right. So... That's in place. And I think if I went any further with this, the issue that I'm having is that this shorter gear is actually hitting this fork. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to take the shaft out and rotate the case over so that I can get the bolts in these guys and just kind of get them snug. And then uh, we can put this back in, put the that main gear assembly back in place here as well, and start trying to adjust these. All right, so I got those all snuggy. These don't move as much as they were before because they won't let them. And I've got everybody in a neutral position here. <clears throat> so we're going to put the main shaft in first. Leslie, you got to get your pin in place. And get that guy in place. Okay. That's all good. No interference there. All right. And get your main set. This also has a pin. And that's going to go in like that, but we have to get the saddles in the right spot, which I believe are not currently doing what they need to. It's possible that I set these up in the wrong position. <coughs> anyway, so that's going to go in there. 
right? All right, I think I think this might actually currently be oh. be in gear, maybe. Okay, that's one. And I get, and there it is. Okay, so that's all in now. And I've got my forks where they need to be. All right, first gear is a little chewed up, but I think it'll be okay. So this is currently in neutral, it looks like. And so I'm going to spin it this way. And that's, that should be in neutral anyway, because all those are there. So what happens if we, if we, how do I, how am I going to do this? Maybe just do, okay. Three, yep, okay, so it's in first right now, I guess. This is first, which would be should actually be this way, I guess. Right? Yep, so that's first. And then neutral again. Something's hidden. So that's neutral. Second. Yep, it does feel a tiny bit more difficult to turn. Okay, so now we're going to go into uh, third. It's a little bit easier. Okay, and then. Fourth. Kind of moved everybody where they want to go and made sure everything was good. So I'm hoping I can uh, tighten those up and get those where those want to be. And then uh, we can try to put the diff in, maybe. Which is going to be interesting because the axles are still all attached to everything. So um, yeah, let me, uh, let me torque those adjustments up. <coughs> And uh, and then we can start trying to get the rest of this back together. All right, so before I can get all of this finalized, um, well, this is all finalized, but the main shaft's going to go in, and there's a little seal that goes here, and I'm going to put some gasket cinch on it, and I don't want that to sit while I'm doing everything else. So I'm going to get the diff ready to go in, and uh, I've got the, um, the throwout bearing release fork thing, that goes here, um, currently being cleaned up, so that has to go in as well. Um, so I've got a couple of little pieces I want to put in first before we can do that and get the other half on. So I want to get this bearing off of here so that I can put it in the case. Although, I guess I can, I think, you know what, I think I'm going to heat this up and try to get this pressed on the rest of the way. And then once that's on, I'll heat the case up and try to drop this whole thing in. So, uh, something to note, because you're always going to be building on this side of the case, because the other half is going to slide on over this and all your bits are in there. When you put the diff in, you want the gears facing, the teeth facing up towards you you can put it in the other way, but if you do that, because it'll rotate in the opposite direction, you'll have four reverse gears and one forward. Okay, so you obviously don't want that. So this has to face up towards you. Um, so let me, uh, let me start trying to get this in place, and then we can uh, try to get it in the case. I'm gonna do a little, uh, little heat cycle here.
Okay. Alright, that's all the way in. I don't remember what this is for. Because I only have one of them, I think. What the hell is this? Alright, now I'm now I'm concerned, so let me <laughs> let me see if I can find where this goes. Well, I can't find anything it goes to, so uh, I'm going to assume that it doesn't actually belong to this, and I'm just a slob. So let me uh, let me heat the case up here. Make a proper mess of this. I have to get that off because this doesn't. So. All right. Well, that's not going to work. And it's stuck. You asshole. Oh. Okay. No. All right. <laughs> All righty. How are we going to do this then? There we go. Let me try to get that baron off of there and just get that directly in the case first. And then we'll try this again. Oh, that's very good. Yep. That's all the way in. Great. The main shaft. All right. The rest of the whatever this is. Gear set. Get your pin in the right spot. Come on. There we go. Okay. So that's all. If I rotate this, I'll let it that side. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ooh, almost got bonked in the head. some bits cleaned up here we're gonna put uh, I'm gonna put the cross shaft in uh, these are only uh, anchored on one side it doesn't go into the other side of the case but you can't take it out or put it in with the other half of the case on so I'm gonna put some uh, some assembly lube on this and try to get it through there without ruining the bushing and then, uh, and then we can start thinking about maybe getting the other half of the case on maybe Okay, so I got that greased up. And it's gonna go in there. Just like that. Make sure that that's rotating good. I am running out of parts, so I must be doing something correctly. So let me see uh 
Let me see about getting the other side of the case ready and then we'll get the seal in. And then I'll get all my bolts ready to go in and then we can uh, try to slap that on. Okay, so I've got my seal flange kind of cleaned up here. We're going to get the bearing in and then there's this like sled looking piece that goes kind of up here that I've got a bolt in, but I want to get the bearing in first. So I'm going to heat this case up again, same way I did on the other side, and very gently hammer that in. Okay, is that all the way in? It appears so. Okay, so now we're going to take this guy, and it, I think this only goes on one way. As you can see, it's got a little bit of a lip here. So that's going to go up like that. Is there anything else that has to go on this side of the case? I don't think there is. So I've got to get my seal, which is not this one. This is the old one, but I've got to get a new one. And uh, I'm going to goop up both sides of this, get that on, and then we can start getting this in. Um, and I've got to get my hardware ready to go in. The only thing I'm missing is a nut for that long stud that goes through the center of this. So I'm going to leave that um, for now. Uh, but the other main ones I should be able to, to do. So let me get that seal and get my hardware ready and then we can, we can get this going here. So I was going to use the gasket cinch to do this, uh, this seal, but I think I'm actually going to use the same bit, bit of stuff that I'm going to use to seal the case halves, which is the L-ring Carol T. I use this on the engines. It's been really good for me. Um, so I'm going to put a bead of this along the sealing sections of this, put it in the saddle here, get the seal on that shaft, plop that in, put a little bit over that, and then start putting the, uh, the other side of the case in on in places. I don't know how this is going to work out for transmission, but I guess I'll find out. So, take this guy, shove it in there. Okay, rotate that, put that down. Should be fully seated now. Okay. We're just gonna take a little bit of this, dress that up. Okay. We'll take this guy, slide this over. some heat again. All right, time for bolts and nuts. I'm sure there's correct lengths and whatnot, but that's much too long. I wonder what this was for. Oh, 
guess we'll find out eventually. Oh, it's probably for this guy down here in the back. There we go. Okay. Sorry if my head's getting in the way, just trying to see things. nuts because I'm too lazy to find washers. Okay. All right. I'm just going to go around and tighten everybody up. All right. Those are all pretty snug. I got one more to do inside the inside the uh, bell housing here, and then I'm going to see if I can get this thing to rotate and. Get it to go through all the gears. Um, I can try and rotate one while you rotate the other. Yeah. So it. we're gonna go that way. It's going. All right. Great. It requires effort. Yeah. Well, that's what first gear is, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So that's first. Second already good. So that's back to neutral. And then. That should be third. I should be able to. Do, yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's that's fine. Easier. Yeah. Okay, and that sounded I, good. I suppose it's inverse. If you're inputting power this way, it's yeah. going to be a lot harder at first. Than... And that should be that should be fourth, which also should be super smooth. Okay, and then if I go down, and that's going to be. I'm sure, an amount of that. Also, will loosen up as it gets up to temp and yeah, well, maybe moves around in there and, and does its thing. this should be reverse. Can we? We're gonna yep. spin it the other way. Yep. Oh, jeez. I'm trying. Well, maybe. Trying to spin oh wait, yeah, way. no. Let's. Will it go the other way? Can we spin it the the other or, way? Yep. Nope. Nope. Okay, go the other way again. Nope. nope. I wonder if I'm not fully that, engaged. Yeah, maybe. Or that maybe. will probably require more torque than first, though. Yeah. To be fair. That felt like it went in better. Try it again. Nope. Huh. Making the noise makes it work better. The uh, noise. But I can spin the input shaft, and the and the the axles are going both right. going backwards. I think you're okay, and I think that it probably just requires a shit ton more torque in reverse. Yeah. That. Yep. All right. Great. I mean, if first was required both of us and barely. Yeah. Reverse will be harder. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Transmission. Transmission. All right, well, I've got one more stud to put through here, but I have to, I have to take that bolt to the hardware store to get a nut for it. Um, so that, I think, is actually going to do it for this episode. Next time, after I do that bolt, um, we're going to set up the clutch arm. We're going to do the, uh, the tubes. Um, and then uh, I need to find, I need to get another nose cone and uh, another hockey stick, and then we can finish up the backside. Um, and then hopefully sometime soon, we'll be able to hoof this thing in Clementine and see if it runs any better. Um, I gotta go through the carburetor again on that because now it's all gunk full of stuff. Um, I'd also like to get this all the way out to the back and plates and everything too, but I think I'm actually gonna end up pulling that off the other car. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a like, leave a comment, share with your friends. And you can follow me on Instagram at WickedWorks. Uh, thanks again, and we will see you at the next one. Ah.